power on the hour. When we listen and gain our knowledge and power, we turn to the no bullshit hour. It's news hour. No bullshit news hour. No bullshit. Someone should probably fix that. Fix the shit. <laughs> One word, news hour. You're going to file official documents to the Attorney Grievance Commission. It's news hour. Proofread your shit. More on that in a moment. But first, this bit. <laughs> no bullshit. Oh my, let's just do breaking news. No more bullshit. No more bullshit. No bullshit. Hey, Karen. Hey, Charlie. I love that. That was such a fun day. Wasn't it? Whatever happened to Bob? I don't know. He never responds to my texts. I've checked on him a few times, but I stopped because he stopped responding. What about Chicken Joe? I didn't know. Never knew how to reach him. So See, it, it's it's sort of like those are the Pete Best of this <laughs> fastest growing news show in Michigan. Sorry, guys. Should have got in early. Could have got shares. Am I Ringo? Yeah, you fucking Ringo, man. Peace and love. Okay, listen. Happy here's some breaking happy news. Birthday, what? Happy birthday. Oh, thank you. Happy birthday. You're finally 21, so happy birthday. <laughs> 55, but I look good. I'm looking at all the people I went, I went to college with. I'm like, you're old looking, motherfucker. I'm kind of jealous. I'm 45 and you look younger than me. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> oh, no. It's a light beer. <laughs> Listen, guess who we're going to have on today? You got Share, share, share. Share, share, share. Get ready. Guess who's coming on? Pre recorded. Nicole Curtis. Rehab addict. The hot chick that can handle a hammer and fix houses. Rehab Addict Rescue on HGTV. You all know what's happening. She's at war with Mayor Mike and his crappy land bank. Taking the house. She won't let him take the house. Chick's firecracker, so stay tuned for that. But first, I got to give you this breaking news. Breaking news. 150,000 false unemployment applications have been discovered in the basement of the TCF Center. I'm just kidding. That is bullshit. This is April Fool's. Oh, no. But I'm, I'm telling you, I opened a letter from oh, the Depart- State, Miss State of Michigan Department of Labor and Economic Opportunity Unemployment Insurance Agency. Ooh. All right. So at the beginning of the pandemic, I applied for a couple weeks, right? Sure. And then I went online to get the tax papers because you got to pay tax on that. Do you got to pay tax on that? I thought they changed it. I, they're not very clear on... The federal government said you don't have to pay tax on it. The state what government, about, yeah. whoa, 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 how about that? We don't know yet. We don't know. Michigan done got his shit together, Karen. <laughs> I'm telling you, Charlie, nobody knows what is going on with the money that's being distributed. And I mean that at the state and the federal level. It is a clusterfuck. It, I mean, it oh, really she is. said it. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> yes, it's a clusterfuck. We hear, I hear all of you. You remember Junior from Lansing, Mm -hmm. fielding calls from Grandpa, wants to blow his own brains out. It's serious business. We're for you. We're on your side. This state's unemployment's been messed up for about four or five years now, like severely messed up. So I go on there to get the tax form. And then it's like, you've been flagged. Are you for real? Are you you a real guy? Are are you a fraud? Send us proof. I'm like, I sent you my my tax form. You, You cut me to check. I just want the statement, right? Don't do that. Then I get another flag. I try to get in there the next time. I get another flag. You may be liable to repay that for fraud. I'm like, what the fuck? So I try to reload the um, documentation that they want. That they already have. Yeah, and, and it won't upload. Because <laughs> they already have it. It won't freaking upload. Okay, so I end up getting it because you can go around it. They're, you know, they, they mail it to you. So you get it, but you can't access it online. So somebody, you know what I'm saying? Wow. Yes. Okay. What a nightmare. Then, I get this. Pandemic Unemployment Assistance Monetary Redetermination Notice of Additional Benefit Entitlement. I'm eligible for some more. Some more (laughs) free money. Do you have to prove who you are? I I don't know. Okay. I'm thinking, what the fuck's going on here? I better log in. So I log in. Yeah. Except I don't log in. It tells me, you've been logged out. (laughs) 
your account is frozen. I'm like, holy shit. Was it because that I couldn't upload that <laughs> yeah. identifying shit that you already know me from? Right? Yeah. It says, call this number. A representative will help you. So I call the number. There's no representative. It's, it. it's like, leave your number. We're going to get back to you. So I leave my number and I get a text. We're going to get back to you. Cool, you're in line. All right. This is going to be the number. We're going to get a hold of you. Very simple. I'm waiting for the call. I'm waiting for the call. Nobody's fucking called back. Okay. And then today, here it comes. Either they've mailed me, they know who I am, they're going to send a letter they're calling back, or I'm going to prison. <laughs> no, it says you're eligible for some more. <laughs> The U.S. Postal Service is faster than their phone service. Yes, right? <laughs> it's laughable. I love the Postal Service. I can, I can put my hands on somebody. It's tangible, yeah. But you know, Charlie, we've got a listener that I guess is aware of or works on uh, the unemployment processing in some capacity and has shared several times just how bad it is. It's backed up. People who are entitled and waiting are due some in excess of $25,000. So, you know, in, in spite of them offering you more and more, if, even after not approving who you are, there are a lot of people that are probably still waiting uh, for their payments. Mm -hmm. Yep. And there's an absolute study. Didn't bring it. So I didn't even expect to go here, but there's the private sector's lost, lost jobs, lost, you know, wealth, but not the public sector. It, it was, it was Capcom. It, it was the, the, um, uh, libertarians. They they have a newspaper and they did a they did a study. They FOIA'd government looking at people got raises. Oh, Remember boy. they furloughed people for a day, but they let them get on unemployment. So and the, you so got the feds to, could pay them. Yeah. yeah, and then the feds could pay you made money mm -hmm. and you didn't do anything. Well, I yeah. feel you out there. It's it's a mess. There's no side to these politics except the inside. That's where the center is. We're with you. Be with us. Nonpartisan. All right, money, money, money. Hit me with that Maurice Davis. King of the party blues. Uh, talking to Luke Nowacki this morning. We're going to have a cocktail tonight. Love the man. Guess what's happening with bonds. Bonds? Well, they've gone up, I believe. The right? yield. The yield has gone yeah, up. We've talked about the yield. Yep. When the yield goes up, that means nobody wants bonds for the long term. They're, they're more um, excited about... The present, they want the money now, they can use it. Yeah. But then, which means less equity. The year went down today. It's down six D basis points, I believe. Oh. That means I don't understand any of it. That's what they do. We won't go into it. The point is, it's up and down like a washwoman's ass on Monday, Karen. What's going on with the economy? Is inflation coming? Are we just around the corner from opening up and having a huge spread? I don't know. That's why you call Luke. Luke, Luke knows. Luke has an idea. Luke's meet some clients today to set up savings plan for the kids. About five twenty nines. Because somebody sure I don't know. That's all. He didn't tell me that. It's all confidential. It's ethical. It's smart. Wait, we're not talking about ADR. We're talking about Luke Nowak. After all, I am talking about. Give him a call. Pinnacle Well. Two four eight six six three four seven four eight. Grow your assets, annuities, individual retirement account. You can play that again. I, I was like gonna it. say. You <laughs> yeah. Make that call now. Your politicians and your children are dependent on you. Luke Nowacki, two four eight six six three four seven four eight. That one, that one timed out a little better. Can you play that some more? I'm just gonna do that for American Coney Island. I just, I just. <laughs> Why don't we have Maurice make one for uh, Americans? Because Maurice. What, is he busy? Is a name. He ain't some basement musician, dude. This guy's known. And not just the uh, Flint City Council representative of War Two. Payment fish sandwiches. And he's that black guy that voted for Trump. <laughs> That's right, yeah. They ain't gonna let him live that down in Flint. They're attacking him for not not actually knowing what's going on, doing the people's business, being a member of the community. You know what I mean? It's not being a God-fearing guy. It's like, you voted for Trump. It's all perception. Oh. You know what else is perception? What? Wall is the one. History. History. How you look at it. Yes. Oh, how you look at it. But there's only one way to look at American Coney Island. It's Detroit's oldest family-run <laughs> restaurant. That's what the history. There's a reason. A reason been there that long. And if you let this thing wither on the vine, we're all going to wither on the vine. Esquire said that. 
We cannot afford to lose a coney dog that snaps when you bite it with proprietary chili with Greek spices, secret Greek spices. I mean, like as if garlic is a Greek spice. The Greeks. With these people. We invented everything. We invented garlic. Society. Yeah. We invented farming. <laughs> Society. You know, we invented breathing. Yeah. You know what I mean? We invented fishing. But you know what they did absolutely invent? The Detroit Coney Dog. Vidalia onions, mustard, really delicious fresh buns. I love them. That's me right there. <laughs> yeah. 55 I love year old those, fresh I buns. I love those fresh buns. <laughs> Hey, and isn't today the last day for the, the fish sandwiches, Charlie? I'm yeah, so some. never mind. It. Yeah, you run on down there right after the show, Karen, get yourself a fish sandwich. So that's over because, you know, mm. happy Easter. Yep. My, my Lord and Savior's coming back. He's risen. And he is not very pleased with you all. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes I wonder if I, if I owe Jesus money or he owes me money. You'll have to I, upload your ID and your tax forms I think to Jesus him. owes me money. That's why I ain't never seeing the guy. I'm calling him, hey, Jesus, what up? Man, you can stop by. Family could really use a bit. My brother shows up more than Jesus. <laughs> I'm just kidding. That's blasphemy. Uh, uh, think, about the, think about the equation that a lot of churches have, that if you give me money, then yeah. God will bless you with the money that you give to me. I never knew God to have a fiduciary. <laughs> yeah, great point. Well, hey, man, God ain't going to drive around in no Camry. <laughs> it's going to be a yeah. Cadillac. What are you talking about Jesus running around? A Mercedes, a Land Rover. Or a donkey. Yeah, he ain't, he ain't doing no Camry. Come on, man. As reliable as they are. <laughs> When you got Jesus as the co-pilot, the car break down and go, don't worry, I got this. <laughs> He's not going to be pushing it? What's that, Karen? In all honesty, Charlie, you know, you're supposed to see God in the people that you encounter. And the least of those that we encounter is where we will find him. And I really believe that. And I think that that's why you are supposed to treat everybody with the same level of respect and courtesy and support. People get caught up in titles and trying to kiss the behinds of people that they think are important when the very least of those are where we can prove who we really are and who our hearts are. That's beautiful. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that's good. Just that's saying, good. that's what I think. <laughs> I just let that Where's end. Charlie? <laughs> I just. He was touched by your words. Yeah, I was, because most people I say, look at their face, I see, God damn. <laughs> What the fuck's wrong with you, man? What would Jesus do? How, oh, Charlie? <laughs> okay. Uh, no, people are going to get mad at me, but... You know, That's okay. I got a pretty good crucifixion joke. I mean, you know, uh, I'm, I, I'm, hey, I'm a Catholic. We love jokes. Okay. We being Catholics. So Jesus is up on the cross. He's up. <laughs> suffering. He says, David. David. Yes. Yes, my Lord. Yes. David. I can see your house from here. <laughs> we'll cut. The, we'll take care of that in post. Oh, no, that's that's a great joke. We'll take care of that in post. It's very literal when you won't expect it to be. What's wrong with that, Charlie? I mean, Jesus, like Jesus, heard. look. Um, what's um, third president of the United States? Third president Jefferson. Yes, Thomas Jefferson did the Jeffersonian Bible. It was yeah. Greek, French, Latin, and English, and he took Christ's life. And took out all the miracles. Only, only the words, the philosophy. Mm -hmm. Brilliant. He's a teacher. You know who sent me that book? Bill Maher's executive producer. Really? Born again Catholic guy. When you read it, it's a, a new philosophy in the dawn of time, which is, you know, before that it was worry about yourself. This one's worry about others. Did he insert anything for the teenage years? Only what's in there, man. I mean, well, he may, you know, there's no teenage years for Jesus. He could have been a regular teenager. We don't know. He was, he was working, hammering like Nicole Curtis. He's working on houses. Beautiful transition. No time to write. Before we get to Nicole Curtis, it was recorded, recorded earlier because she kindly made time, you know, out of her shooting schedule. To, 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 so we had to accommodate it. She accommodated us, she, you know, so she could, um, you know, take a shit on Mike Duggan. <laughs> oh, and there's some stuff in there. There's breaking news in there, media. Uh, before we get to that, real quick. This bothers me. Here, breaking news. Hit it. Breaking news. Right there. Last year's news today. Last year's news today. Appearing on the No Bullshit News Hour in January, I mean June 2020. State Senator Pete Lacido, now the Macomb County Prosecutor. 
Remember that? Mm-hmm. I remember it well. And he said, look, if uh, Whitmer, if people die because of your stuff, your actions, your programs in these nursing homes, absolutely, you could be charged. If there's a crime, he would charge her. Yeah. Now we're on to the investigation portion. So this shows up. I get a call a couple nights ago. Hey, dude, you're in the paper. What? Okay, the professor emeritus Larry Dubin from uh, University of Detroit Mercy here and Professor Claire Finkelstein of the University of Pennsylvania. Let's see. uh, uh, She's co-founder and director of the Center for Ethics and the Rule of Law at UPenn. Spread out. And Richard Painter, the S. Walter Ritchie Professor of Corporate Law at the University of Minnesota Law School, where he teaches uh, uh, professional responsibility. That's a lot of words. That's three people. Quite a title. Going after Lacido. Okay, quoting from our program, uh, quote this right here. On June 19th, according to this complaint to the um, Michigan Attorney Grievance Commission. Yeah, this is an ethical complaint. I'm, yes, yeah. it's an, you're going to help me with this. It's an ethical complaint. All complaints are confidential. Mm-hmm. The reason that they're confidential is you know how lawyers are, very litigious people. I'm going to file a grievance on you. I'm going to get somebody to file a... I'm going to take your reputation apart, even if there's nothing there. So they remain confidential. So you have uh, some stature. If it's frivolous, public's not going to hear about it. The only time you will hear about a grievance is the commission determines if it should be investigated. Then they investigate it. Then they hold a hearing. And if there's going to be punishment meted out, then all of that becomes public. And if it doesn't get to that level, it never becomes public. Okay? It happens more often than I think people realize. Now, it's important to say that Professor Dubin, Larry, used to be the chairman of this commission. Oh, okay. Chairman. So he knows the rules inside and out. Yeah. So now into the complaint here, it says on June 19th, Senator Lacido escalated his attacks. Oh, these are all Repu- uh, Democrats, by the way. Escalated his attacks on the governor's policies. He appeared on the podcast, the No Bullshit News Hour, and told host Charlie LaDuff what our governor has done is literally cold-blooded, killed the most injured parties that are out there, the ones that have compromised immune systems, cold-blooded. Senator Lacido added that, quote, only she has the blood on her hands with the death of those individuals. Asked if he would prosecute Whitmer if he was elected prosecutor by yours truly. Senator Lacido answered, quote, if we, if we have the information that supports a conviction, you're damn right she's going to get charged because she deserves to own up to those deaths in those nursing homes. Okay. Mm-hmm. Now this thing goes on to say, then he told Breitbart, okay, yep. no reporter's name, he published an opinion piece in the Macomb Daily. He, later when he becomes prosecutor, told the local news station. Didn't use their names. Why are you naming me? You're trying to link me at the hip with Lacido. Because he knows about the lawsuit. Our lawsuit. Yeah, for data. Yeah. Which has- is entirely different. You know, it's not the same thing. So, look, I called Larry. Larry. Yeah. I called Larry. Hey, you know, first of all, Larry, who leaked it? Did you leak it? Sounded like he was swallowing ice cubes. <laughs> well, what'd it be? I said, was it your pals in uh, Minnesota and Pennsylvania? I, I doubt that. Well, then who did? Because the, the commission is a wing of the Supreme Court. I said, Larry, if the Supreme Court leaked it, we got real big troubles. Who's, this is, this is a, a a political bomb. Yeah. Okay, now I say, Larry. It's a little transparent, but I yeah. say, Larry, you're on, you're on local TV. You're talking to the newspapers. You don't even bother to answer my calls. I got to hunt you down at home. He's too busy being on wanna, TV. Want to be on the show? Did you ask him to come on the show? Yeah, he says, I'm really not interested. The statements made by uh, we three speak for themselves, and there'll be no further. Huh. Well, Larry. Larry. It's ethically dubious, Larry. Especially when you were the chairman of this committee. You know that you could have wrote an op-ed. You could have filed a complaint. Because ultimately what Larry wants is Lacido to recuse himself at least from the investigation. Because of of those comments. Because Lacido's trying to drum up cases. Wants it to go away. So, look. Anybody with an ethical bone would know 
you write the op-ed, you file the grievance, and you keep it quiet. You know that. He told me, uh, there's no restrictions that the complainant can't, can't push it out in public. But you know what you're doing with that. You're besmirching the reputation without him being able to answer it. You politicized the commission. You could have just wrote an op-ed with your pals. But no, you want to get a bank. Why didn't you call me, Larry? Because I was going to ask you that. I've never called this guy. He reminds me of a professor in New York, uh, Mitchell Moss, professor of urban planning at NYU. Mm -hmm. Used to call him up as a reporter at the New York Times. Whenever you needed like some bullshit quote about, you know, stickball in Flatbush, Brooklyn in the 50s and what it meant to Italians. He's the expert. He didn't know. Yeah. He would just get, he'd give you what you want. <laughs> That's kind of what Dubin is around here. You call him up for a court case he's not involved with. The guy, remember, he's been a professor since 75. Okay, Kwame Kilpatrick, right? Mm -hmm. Stuff like that. Process. Never called him because Mitchell, when we were at the New York Times, some editors started noticing that the guy was being quoted a lot by lazy reporters. <laughs> so he Googled him. He was in the paper 31 times in 28 days. So they're like, you can't talk to Professor Mitchell Moss for 60 days. They, yeah. they banned him from yeah. the paper. So here's the thing, well, Larry. It's almost like Larry likes to be seen and heard. Yeah, Larry. It's a political hit. It's Democratic BS. You just politicize. Teach this in your ethics course. I know what you did, and you dodged me. I don't like showing up in papers and not knowing. Who's the local team? You see what I'm doing, dude? See what I'm, I don't care. I don't drink with your people. I'm with my people. Remember something. I'm not with the Republicans. Not with them. I'm with the people. The Republicans call me up all week, want me to come to the Republican County Fair. Come speak. Get the fuck on. Oh, right? They want me to show up in their uh, documentaries they're making about the nursing homes, but they don't know any nurses. I'm like, get the fuck on. Oh, boy. Because you want to know what? The, the Republicans control Lansing. They don't have the governor, but mm -hmm. they've got the legislature. They've got the Senate. They've got the House. Where is any... I ain't doing your work. It ain't for you. Here. The lobbyists, the political arm for the nursing homes. Okay. Okay? You want to know in the last election cycle, 2020. Please, big donors. Who they gave to. Yeah. Big. $42,000 to the House Republican Campaign Committee. Next biggest contributor. Uh, contribution. 21000 to the Senate Republican Campaign Committee. Coming in third at half that at 10000 hedging a bet, the Michigan House Democratic Fund. A quarter of what the Republican House gets. Number four, receiving the same amount, $10,000. Chatfield Majority Fund. That's the Republican Speaker of the House and his political fund. Ooh. Republican. Then we skip one. And then we go to one, two, three, four, five, six at $7,500. Senator James Vanderwall, who's he? He's the Republican chairman of the Health and Human Services Committee, where all the nursing wow. home shit goes through. Wow. No, you ain't doing anything up there. All I want, Larry, all I want is an honest accounting. And I noticed in your footnotes, you're defending the governor and how she followed CDC protocol. You don't listen to his show, do you? You don't listen. Look. Well, is he trying to defend the governor or is he upset at the ethics of Lucido? It seems a little uh, playing both hands. I, they're trying to take Lucido out and yeah. shut him up and yeah. it's worked. Yeah. Right? I, this isn't political. You don't know what you're talking about. I want the numbers. Every year about 100,000 people die in Michigan. It's like clockwork. Mm -hmm. How come this year it was 124,000? Oh, by the way, on one of the websites in the Health and Human Services, you have 16,000 people dead. But when you tally up... I'm going to guess it doesn't one, match. It's 11,100. <laughs> and then uh, Johns Hopkins, the ones yeah. keeping track, yep. they're calling it 17,000. Wow. It's never been right. We yeah. got to make rational decisions about society and our old people. Make no mistake, Larry. Who's coming? Was he hard to get a hold of? Yes, he was. Oh, that's interesting.
You know what I mean? Call his office, call his home, email him, email him, nothing. Hmm. It's funny. Maybe he, it was just you, Charlie. You know it was. Of course. <laughs> Gulp, I was being facetious. Gulp. Larry, <laughs> Larry, did you leak it? Did you? Doesn't seem very ethical. Or did you give the numbers out to your colleagues and they leaked it? Because I know how it worked. Either way, it doesn't sound very ethical. And I, I like, yeah, hey, Lucido's kind of a wing nut. You know what I mean? Sure. I, I, I have mine. He's an interesting character. Head of the Senate Oversight Committee. Mm -hmm. The prosecutor of Macomb. Yeah, look, you have the right and you have a point in here. Fine. Do it ethically. Leave me out of it. Or put everybody else in it. Bullshit. Well, I guess there goes drinks at Larry's house. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, there'll be a camera there. You can watch it later. Shit. <laughs> Charlie. <laughs> I'll move on now here, but I'm, I'm going to say, look, let me make this clear. One, Larry, Michigan was one of the very last states to even track this data. It was done on an honor system. And from the outset, the data was wildly inaccurate. You need probable cause? Listen to the program. You'll hear the doctors. You'll hear the nurses. You know it, Nestle. Listen to the program. A lot of probable cause. For what? I'm not trying to get Whitmer indicted. She's not getting indicted. No. Cuomo's not getting indicted. I just want an answer. And the government won't give us the data? And not one news organization has decided to join the suit? No. You know why? Because Larry or his people or the Supreme Court slides him a document, which it, inoculates Larry from any criticism about ethically dubious practices, right? Yeah. And they, they don't want to be, no, news agencies don't want to be cut off from the government. Mm hmm Unless it's Trump. Yeah. But, you know, he was great. he give you the news every day. Media had been sitting on its ass for a couple years now. Two, Michigan has located thousands of deaths through those vital record searches. However, vital records cases are not recorded or broken down as long-term care facility deaths or anything else. New York doesn't do that. Hmm. Okay? See, all the numbers are wildly fucking all over the place. Come on, man. We need an explanation. More than 75% of Michigan's licensed long-term care facilities, namely adult foster care homes with populations of under 13 people, aren't even required to report. They don't do that in other states. That's the argument. Answer it. You can't. Oh, and by the way, we're not below the national average. The national average for long-term care facilities, nursing homes, mm -hmm. the foster care, the old people, is 33%. Today, right now, we're at 35 and there's a big question about the numbers. That's all. Stop saying it. And stop putting my name in that. And it's Karen. And it's Mark. And it's Mannequin. <laughs> right? And it's everybody that, that works here. We're working for the people, dude. Leave my name out of it. Yeah. Or, now, come, or come on the show. No, here, let, me, let, me, let me take care of that. Business before we get to Nicole. We're going to go with Nicole and then just get on home, right? Beautiful. Okay, listen. So, Nicole. Well, first of all, let me do... You want to get a house? Yeah. Okay, like like Nicole. Want Nicole fix it up? Yeah, I need a loan. Okay, you need a loan. Who you go to? You go to Hall Financial. Oh, right? wow. And if you feel good about your interest rate because it's in the threes, get over it. You might be able to be saving some money. You can refi. You can get some money out of it. You can do some things if you did not call no wacky. <laughs> right? <laughs> right? You, We're trying to get trying you guys to, money. Exactly. Oh, well said. That's all. That's really... Just think about it. If you, if you need to do some. what a lot of people some, are trying to do. That's right. Exactly. Be smart and make the call because you could be saving that money. Hall Financial's fast, and they do all the heavy lifting for you. Get you a realtor. Get you the appraisal. They'll do all of that. Just go to davidhallmortgage.com or call 248-308-5000. Real easy. Watch this. davidhallmortgage.com. NMLS number 1467435. But what if I'm having trouble with, like, uh, you know, the city or uh, my construction? What should I do then? Let's say you get a land bank house like Nicole Curtis did, right? Yes. And let's say you thought the title was clear and it wasn't clear, and yet you registered and you got the title for the property. I can't take care of that mess. And then the government comes 500 days later and files claim. Now, you've already put a bunch of money in that. It's a land bank house, right? Yeah. They could give it to you for a dollar. Sure. But they're trying to stiff you. They want to take it from you. They want to take it from you. Who do I call? 
You call ghost but oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> We'll take that out in post. <laughs> no, we won't. You call ADR. <laughs> Is he ADR. On? You know what they do, what they really specialize in? Getting you through the, the, the minefield of mindless bureaucracy. Ugh. That's basically what they do. But is he honest? He's ethical. Yeah, honest and ethical. At, smart. <laughs> discreet. Well, how do I get a hold of him? Oh, that's <laughs> glad you asked. You just simply dial. I'm taking, I'm taking notes. 248-318-9424. That's 318-9424. You call Barry Ellentech. Listen, it's not just City Hall, right? It's project management. It's demolition. It's rehabilitation like Nicole does. I got to get these people together. Owner representative services, technology, deployments, setup, consulting, all of it. Get it done the way it should be done without excuses. Barry Ellentech over there at ADR Consultants. 248-318-9424. So, without a, I think in that spot, I just kind of laid out what was happening to Nicole. She's at war with the city, with the mayor, with the land bank, this dubious quasi-public-private where we hide all this shit and never get a straight answer. And I blew them up, and they've had four or five directors running the thing, a couple, four or five directors of demolition. That's where the federal investigation is. And during all of this time, they were such a mess. Nicole gets mixed up in it, buys a house, and, well... Let her just tell you. It seemed really simple. A couple years ago, I saw a house for sale and it's in the neighborhood that we're, we're always working in. And so I bought it because no one else was buying it because it was a disaster. And it's one of those that you go by all the time and you're like, I really wish that this house wasn't still looking like that. And I need another house. Like I need a hole in the head. Like we have a lot of projects and, um, you know, these projects we don't make money on. It's just, you know, it's, we put a lot of money into them, but this one, nobody wanted, nobody was buying. And I'm like, screw it. We'll buy it. Right. So we paid 17,000 for it, which to anyone else in the country sounds like, holy cow, you're so dumb. You got, you know, you bought a house for the the price of a Chevette, you know, a, a <laughs> restored Chevette, right. Um, but in Detroit, you know, 17 grand's a lot of money for a house. It doesn't have a roof. It doesn't have mechanics. It doesn't have windows. I mean, I, I was like, I can't even believe I'm paying this much for the house. So we bought it from a private owner um, and everything seemed to be going along like a normal deal that we do. You know, we buy, we buy houses on quick claim deeds a lot. I mean, that's what you do when they're these small cash things. You don't have a mortgage to pay off. You don't have an appraisal. You don't have any of this wacky stuff. So uh, we bought it. And then I think it was like nine months, 10 months. Don't quote me. I'm just throwing numbers out here later that we got this call saying um, it's a land bank property. Um, and I thought I was like, oh, hey, you got your numbers mixed up because we we had another land bank property on East Grand. So are you calling about that? Because, you know, that's what it is. And it just it spiraled from there to where every day I was like, I can't believe this is happening. So let me go like this. You bought the house from a private owner who had bought right. the house as an investment property and they couldn't keep up with it and they didn't make. I don't, yeah. I know nothing. I know nothing about the, the why the Collies bought the house, how long they had had the house. I don't really ever get into that. Right. Um, but as the know, reporter, is the reporter I do. Yeah. So the, the whole point is the land bank is taking it back from them. Okay. And apparently, supposedly, allegedly, but I've never seen an agreement between the land bank and the Collies. I've never seen any of this documentation. I have it. Okay, so, so now you buy a quick claim yeah. deed from the Collies. You go register it with the Register of Deeds. I am now the owner, right? Yes. And then what? About 476 days later, the land bank comes to file their deed, right? Like a year and almost a half, right? Yeah. This is yeah. the fucking land bank. That's how this fucking land bank works in this town. I know the land bank. Okay, so they're saying, hey, that's our house. Now, you have put lots of money into it. You insured it. You, you made sure it was locked down. You're rehabbing it. And they're going to take you to court and they get it. Um, yeah, I mean, it wasn't that simple. Basically, it was like, uh, Nicole, if you don't sign this deal with us. And their deal was, their, their agreements are nothing. I'm like, I'm not, 
I'm not going to sign this because if we don't follow it to the T, you're just going to take the house anyways. And I'm already 500 K in, you know, now, I wasn't 500 K in, but that was our projection on this project of what we wanted to spend. Um, and I was like, no. And I, I seriously, I seriously did not, you know, I always say this with a smile because all of my dealings with the land bank have been so ridiculous over the years that, um, you know, I kept being like, really, you're going to take the house. Okay. No, come on. This is stupid. Um, and at that same point, this is the best part. Um, just like two months before they came at us, I received in the mail this glorified <laughs> certificate that looks like, do you guys remember being in fifth grade and you took the presidential fitness test? <laughs> um, yes. And you got like the little certification with the gold seal sticker. Yes. So I received one in the mail from the land bank. Um, I'll send you a picture of it. It's the best thing in the world, but it gave me the giggles because it said, congratulations, Nicole Curtis, <laughs> you've completed, you, you're like an honorary completion of the land bank occupancy or something. And like, we're so proud of you. It's all stamped on this. So I received it for a property that we had rehabbed six years before that. Um, so when they, you know, when they kept calling me, I'm like, you guys, this is so ridiculous. You don't even have your paperwork straight. I just got this really cute certification for my other house. Um, so it was just all a big jobly mess. And then, yeah, they took the house. Well, here's the deal. Here's the deal with this land bank. I understand the land bank. You understand the land. The land bank was put together so you could go around like city rules, municipal rules, state rules. It's, it's a quasi government private thing. There are no rules. They could have just given you that house for a dollar because they do it all the goddamn time. So, oh, there's a mistake. Oh, it's a cool chick from Michigan. She's a star on, let's do it, HDTV, Rehab Addict Rescue. You can, you can find it there. Right? And they could have just done that. But no, they're going to rip it from you, put it on the market and say, hey, put in a bit. Right? You know that and I know that, right? Yeah. So why? I so mean, why are they busting yeah, your balls? Okay. Um, you know, I think, I mean, this is just, this is just my gut feeling here, but I have this tendency to piss people off as everybody knows, because I, I don't have, I'm not in, I'm not, I'm not in any position where I need to kiss somebody's A to get what I need or get what I want. I've made my own money. You know, for 10 years, I had a cleaning business in Detroit. It was called Mrs. Clean. I had to go to people's houses, scrub floors, scrub toilets. And that's how I bankrolled all these projects. So you do that for 10 years. Um, then you come out and you, I make all my money. I invest my own money. It's my private money. It's everything else. So when somebody comes at me like that, I'm like, seriously, screw off. Like, um, I, I'm not playing into that. I don't need to do that. So when um, when I <laughs> had these early conversations with um, an attorney from the land bank, you know, I was I was very like, hey, dude, this I know I know the rules of the land bank. We've worked with land banks all over the country. We know that you can take something and the value isn't necessarily a monetary number. The value is um, how it's going to improve the neighborhood. Uh how it's going to be a best use of property, which is how they're able to sell properties for a dollar. So I'm like, you guys could easily just admit that this has been a huge clerical issue. Clearly, it was a clerical issue on part of the land bank when they forgot to follow through with this judgment and then it was gone. It was very easy for them to be like, you know what? She's already the owner. There's nothing we can do. Hands are tied. They didn't. So I have no answer for that. Um, Clearly, I think that would have saved us all a lot. And and let me just go on the record saying this, that house would have already been rehabbed. I would have already, you know, silly about, for me, but I would have already dumped 500K in and restored it. And it would be a beautiful home on East Grand Boulevard right now. But instead, it's sitting there. It's like in purgatory. So how insulted or pissed off were you when you see a headline that uh, the mayor of the city says, eh, you were scammed. Sorry. You know... I didn't, I'll tell you this. Um, I, I do my best, uh, not to, you know, I know that all the reporters out there, they, they have a headline to sell, right? So they're going to take, especially the most recent one, uh, that came out, I think a couple of days ago. I, I understand that. Um, so it doesn't, it doesn't really do that. I did not hear, uh, what the mayor said. So I was just taking it in the context they did. 
But I think a lot of times people just say stuff, right? And they don't know all the details. And I was like, okay, um, I do think it came off to, you know, I, I've worked really hard 25 years in construction as a blonde female who's 100 pounds and five foot three. And, you know, I'm not some dipshit who doesn't know her stuff. Um, and so for me, I was kind of like, huh. So now you're saying that I was scammed. I wasn't scammed. Um, you know, if I made a mistake and I went and the deed actually said Detroit Land Bank and I still bought the house, then of course, then I gotta I gotta own up to that and be like, yeah, I screwed up. But that wasn't that. The isn't city what happened. did yes, not that's it. That's the land bank did right not there. file its deed. Mm -hmm. We know the land bank's fucked up. We know when when you were trying to negotiate with them, they're in the middle of a big yeah. federal investigation for poisoning the city and these demolitions. Oh, by the way, sir, have you gotten the latest subpoenas yet for the grass? That baby's still live. You know it's still live. And I read an Instagram post where you said the new director of the land bank said, we've been so out of sorts and busy answering the Fed's questions that you got lost in the wash. Is that right? Yeah. So what I did do, Charlie, because I, I run a company, right? So I will get, if I get a message that, you know, there's something that there's a pretty major issue going on, right? I don't say I'm not dealing with it. That's not the way you run a company. That's especially not the way you direct a government agency when you're paid for by taxpayers, right? Um, because the bottom line is um, the Detroit Land Bank is taxpayer funded. Everybody is. But most importantly, your job as a director and as a leader uh, is to resolve the problems. You put the flames out, right? You you find a solution. So my first thought was when all this was going down, um, let's do a meeting. Let's do a meeting. Let's all sit in a room. Uh, oh, mind you, we couldn't sit in a room because this all started. They started <laughs> coming after me last year in the middle of COVID. Huh. So our guys can't even go to work. Our guys can't go to work. The whole state shut down, right? And so I'm like, so... We can't get water department out. We can't get, you know, anything. We can't get a building permit. I can't get anything going on. But land banks running and full operation. And you guys want to take my house. You got to call again, ADR consultants if you need to get something done with the government. around. Yes. <laughs> Anybody from the mayor's office. I mean, because usually if in fact there's an issue, especially one that that is high profile, that stands to either create an enemy or have a negative reflection on the city, that there is some direct outreach, if not from him on his behalf. Have you received any? You know, um, where I made the mistake is that I, I really did just try to keep this internal. And I thought that I could sit down with the director of the land bank and, and just let's figure this out. Um, what I should have done from day one is you're right. I should have reached out to the mayor right away no, and been like, dude, what? To you. <laughs> uh, no, but, but my, Oh, you know what? And, and these are things that I am not privy to know um, when the mayor's office was first aware of it, when they knew of it. Um, you know, I, I don't have those details, you know, and, and again, I don't want bad press for Detroit that goes against everything that we've been working so hard for for the last decade in the city for. I don't want it. You leave I it to me. To figure out, like, huh? You leave that to me because like what you might think is bad news is good news because we got to clean up this garbage, right? Now you had a sit down with the mayor. The mayor made you an offer. What was the offer? Well, I'm not going to. Come I, on. I, I already know, you know, know what it is. Come on. <laughs> Come on. I know what it is. Come well, on. Here's, here's what it was. I was told to, um, you know, make an offer on the house that I had already previously bought. Um, and I said, you know, I said, I, that doesn't sit well with me. The, like I've already put this money out. Um, the other thing is, is that every dollar, and where's this going? This go is going back into the land bank. Like what's the purpose? Um, the money should be going back into the house. And, you know, they have the house listed at $40,000, um, which is a lot for that house. Yes, it is. Honest. So, um, you know, I said, especially a lot for me to ask me to pay to buy the house that I already put money in when I'm like, okay, so then why are we profiting? Why the land bank's purpose is not to make a profit. That was not the purpose of why these land banks were developed. They were to find best use of property to improve neighborhoods. So if we know that, if we know that my company is already 
invested in this. My company has already paid the taxes on it. You know, the other thing is if the Detroit Land Bank owned it for this long, was I trespassing on their property for four <laughs> years and they let me have possession of that? Yes. I don't know. So you met um, with the mayor and he made you an offer, put in an offer, like half price, and then you would you would buy it back from yourself. And then you would sign a non you would sign a non disclosure agreement. Yes? Was that the deal? No, no, no. No, 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 no. No, Charlie, one thing to understand with me, um, the land bank did offer me um, one of the one of the one of the things that they wanted me to sign before was a non disparagement agreement, and there is no way, no whoa. way, I would be signing non disparagement whoa, agreement. Whoa, whoa, see, because we have that issue in this state all of a sudden with our governments, the state, the locals. What do you mean you're signing a document to keep your mouth shut? No, that's not good yeah. government. No, no girlfriend, no, no fucking no. way. Well, well, so that's breaking news. And from everything, you know, what my attorneys, you know, from everything we can see, I mean, that goes against my first amendment, right? But I can't, I can't disclose anything about a government. I don't know, a government agency. So no, I wasn't willing to do that. Where, where I was hoping this would be, um, because I did have a very, very good meeting, um, Gary Brown, who I think he's the director of public works. I'm not sure. I had a great meeting with him um, where we discussed the issues that we're finding with city services and everything. And you know what he said? That's not acceptable. I'm going to fix it. Whoa, whoa, How whoa, whoa. can we fix it? Hey, hey, whoa. Like, hey, oh, wait, hold, wait a second. Gary Brown. He's on the water board. The fuck is Gary Brown? Okay, the water board. Okay. Yeah, but what's, what's that got to do with you? That stinks. Non-disparagement. No, 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 stop, stop, stop. No, no. I had a meeting with him because I was having issues with the water department. Ew. So this is funny. If I'm gonna if I'm gonna meet with the mayor, I'm putting it all out there, right? Like I couldn't get the water turned on right at one of our properties. And so, so the director of the out. water department is meeting with you, Miss Thing. Oh, Jeez, yeah. Opie's. Yeah. By the way, <laughs> I got to do this because this is we're all in it together, and we celebrate you. You're from Lake Orion. You made good. You represent us. You're a fighter. You're like you're, you're one of our women. You and Karen. You both call it a lower level when you know goddamn well it's a basement. <laughs> but the thing is. You just represent other people we've had on this program, regular lunch pail, working class Detroiters, where this kind of shit with the side lots and the buildings get taken from them. And meanwhile, the lieutenant governor, Garland Gilchrist, buys an investment property from the land bank, doesn't do shit with it for two years, and he's allowed to sell it and recoup his losses and some LLC buys it, and they're not forced to do anything. Meanwhile, the boards are falling off the windows, so it's all about who you know, and it's kind of interesting that you fit into that big swing and player deal, but you didn't... Oh, I don't think I'd, I don't think I'd do it all. I think what happened, Charlie, is that um, there was this... Uh, there was a Detroit But you're not player. playing with him. No, I just wanted to finish that. It's cool that you're yeah. not playing the game. So you represent... Oh, I know. I All the other people right. we know. Yeah. No, the, um, how that meeting came about, I don't know if you know this, um, because I wasn't getting, I was getting told no to meet with the director. Um, we, we had emailed the city, uh, the mayor's office to say, Hey, you know, this is going on. But, um, Michael Williams, who is a Detroit citizen who's having issues with the land bank as well, wrote into our office and said, Hey, are you aware that there's a public forum tonight? And I'm like, no, I have no idea. So I went into the Zoom and you, they have this little thing that says, raise your hand, right? Raise your hand to speak at the podium. Um, so I wrote, I, and, and trust me, I'm not tech savvy at all, but I hit the little button to raise my hand. So when the mayor opened up um, the town hall to do to the public, I was the first one. So then I got to ask him, um, I got to say, hey, what's going on? Um, which I, I thank you so much to that gentleman that wrote in to tell us about it, because I'm not really sure that we would have gotten a meeting with the mayor had um, I not approached him during that public forum. Um, you know, and he said, oh, Nicole, I'd love to meet with you anytime. And I said, how about, how about Thursday? Can you do Thursday? <laughs> so that's how we got there. Nicole, you said that uh, so this one gentleman reached out to, and you alluded to earlier, that you're not the only one that has this problem. We've, we've kind of figured that out. How many people do you think have reached out to you that's like, hey, I've had an issue with the land bank, too? We've had a lot. Um, we've, we've had a lot. And I've, you know, I'm, you know, I'm very involved 
involved in Detroit. I'm there a lot. I don't, I'm not somebody that's like, Whoa, I'm in Detroit and I have this big entourage going around, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm there half the week. Um, and I hear, you know, people come and talk to me because they know that I'm not, I'm not somebody who's just like on TV. They know that I'm a neighbor. They know I'm in the community. They know I'm a homeowner. They know I'm a taxpayer and they know that I'm pissed off a lot, a lot of stuff that goes on. So we've heard so many crazy stories. And now, now that we're looking into all of these old cases, um, there, I call them blanket motions. My attorney is probably going to be like, that's not what they're called, but <laughs> where they go in and there's like 25 houses on one hearing. Right. Um, and it's crazy because they'll, um, like I sat through these zoom hearings. Right. And so I'm hearing everybody's business and I'm listening to these cases and I'm like, Holy cow. Like this is like a lot of houses. This is a lot going on. So I think that's where, um, you know, again, I want the land bank to be successful because the Mm. original idea of the land bank was to get these blighted homes Um, And if the owners are gone and if it's been, you know, abandoned for 10 years and 15 years, it it is getting burned out. You know, I I have houses in these neighborhoods. I stay in these neighborhoods. The the fires, I mean, we don't have it so bad anymore. But, you know, seven, eight years ago, the houses were burning every single night around us. And so it was really important. That's why we came out in support of them. And we were like, hey, we want to work with you guys. That's why I publicized it. That's why I even bought an auction. Well, it is kind of funny. Um, And that was all. It is, it is kind of funny where there are planned developments that land bank houses continue to catch on fire. I'm just saying you you can map. Well, it. yes, here's the issue, too. This is where it got into a little sticky situation for me, because, I mean, here's the bottom line. If they would have just like said, we made a mistake, Nicole, go about your business, go rehab this house, then I wouldn't have spent like all this time and money figuring out what the hell went wrong with all of this. And so every little thing you uncover, it's the domino effect. There's something else. There's something else. But if you drive around to all these land bank houses, um, the majority of them aren't secured. They don't have to insure them. They don't have to mow the lawn. So if, you know, my house is in Detroit. If we don't mow the lawn, we get a blight ticket. If we have a broken window, we get a blight ticket. Uh, you know, my worry, my fear that I kept going back to the land bank was, I still have this property insured because if somebody goes in that house and like falls out of the second story window, who are they going to come after? They're going to come after the owner on the deed, which is our company. I'm going there tonight to fall off the roof. You know that I'm going there to fall off the roof tonight. I'm going to do it. You know, um, if I have to keep paying attorney bills, I might just go fall off the roof. (laughs) I'll meet you there, baby. (laughs) Hey, listen, it's so bad. It's so bad. And it's, I'll say it. I, it's not, man, that shit's bordering on a corrupt enterprise. We'll see what the federal government says because they got everything. It's so bad that you are going to Flint. No offense, Flint, but, right? (laughs) (laughs) Well, listen, I'll tell you what. Any city, any city who says, you know what? We really appreciate your work. We, you know, we do, we promote we uh, work with these different directors and teams and everything. We don't make any money off that, right? Do you know how much the city of Detroit pays for positive PR? A lot, right? Um, so we we do that gladly. I had to fight to get our show back in Detroit. You know, it, it was it was my idea to take the show to Detroit. That has become, you know, we were able to shine this bright light on it. So. You know, Flint called in the middle of all this and the director of the land bank, Michael Freeman, is lovely. And so Bobby and I went up there and we met with them and they're like, how can we do things better? What are your ideas, Nicole? What has worked in other cities? You know what? You know, I love brainstorming with other creative, positive people that want to have a positive influence on a city. And it was refreshing to have that. Um, There's your good news, Flint. Flint, there's your good news. Some positivity for Flint. Exactly. And, you know, and that's what I said, but I said to them right away and, and they will attest to this. I said, listen, there is no bullshit in this. First thing I'm asking about is water it's because people are going to, people Flint. are going to interrogate me. They're going to be like, Nicole, what's wait, the deal? wait a minute, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Yeah. You went to Flint to ask about water. I mean, where you been? No, 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 no. What I'm saying, 
Charlie, is that I said, I'm not going to go and sugarcoat this whole situation that we're coming to Flint and we're not going to talk about the issues that Flint has had. Like we need to get like, I want to know the truth because I had questions. Like if we do a house up here, um, what, what is the, where is the Flint water situation at and where is everything at? Um, but I was very clear with them that, um, you know, we don't, we don't have, we're very transparent. We put everything out there. So don't, don't screw with us. Don't sugarcoat it. Tell me exactly what's going on. Um, and how can we all work together? Because again, that's the whole thing. I love living in cities and cities need people living in them to thrive. You don't need somebody living in a micro loft because they're 25 years old and they think it's fine. And then they move out. Mm -hmm. That's We need true. somebody that's going to be a life for there. What'd you want to ask Mark? Well, so you've been rehabbing at least for your television show in Detroit, almost a decade. I, I would assume. Is it, is it easier or better now? Or was it easier then? You know, I, I will say this. We have had a, drastic improvement in um, the fact that I think now at least the inspections and permits are online um, because we used to do it the old fashioned way with paper and everything got lost. So um, scheduling and everything has improved. Um, but I, I would have, I would have said we were doing very well until this recent situation. Um, but you know, it's still, it's, it's still not where it needs to be. There's always room for improvement, you know, and that's, like I said, even our issues with getting the water, you know, mm-hmm. the water meter to get a water meter installed in a house right now in Detroit, you're on a three month, three month lead time. So um, <laughs> let me just put this in perspective. The Detroit Land Bank requires a six month renovation certificate of occupancy agreement at any one of their homes. Now, I'm pretty seasoned in construction. Uh, and if you can't get a water meter appointment for even three months, right. Good luck. And our inspections are backed up and our, our permits are backed up and you can't even go into a city office to, to, to talk to anyone. That's where I was having these discussions with the land bank. Like you were putting unreasonable terms on an agreement, a legal agreement that you're asking me to sign. And There's this no is, pre, this is pre COVID by the way. So, you know, you're not entitled Mr. Mayor or land bank. To, to, everything's a uh, mulligan on the COVID deal. Hmm. It you, you promise shit and it's not there. Nicole, can you do me a favor? Just yeah. for, for the artwork for the show. Can, can I get her up on my screen, please? Thank you. Can you give me a picture? Can you see me? Yeah. Like this for the land bank. <laughs> Nicole Curtis says this to the land <laughs> I, bank. I can't see it. No, no, I can't. <laughs> right there. G- give me that. Give me that one. Go ahead. Come on. Give me just, no. just a little one. Charlie, Charlie, I love you. I love, I've been a huge fan for years. I love, you know, Breaking here's, news. here's where, here's where people know, listen, you know, my, my guys on my site, I'm in, I'm in construction. I work with guys all day long and I have a very, I say the F word, like it's going out of style. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think the thing is, is that, um, again, we just need some reorg. We need somebody to stand up and be like, yes, we admit there are issues here and we are fighting to resolve them. Not fighting Nicole Curtis. We're fighting within to make sure our team operates more efficiently, um, legally, um, and gets back to accomplishing Wait a minute. the goals that we Wait a minute. Make. Wait a minute. I'm on your Instagram here. <laughs> And you're yeah. giving the finger. Oh, I do that all day long, Charlie. Well, give me the finger <laughs> over here. Go, c- come on now. Don't, don't be shrinking wallflower on you on the no bullshit news hour and you're bullshitting me. And by the way, it's a nice picture. Yeah. Give it, come on, give it to just a little. Thank just give me a knuckle, a top knuckle. No. All right, come on. Yeah, no. Okay, no, the, pink, no, the, no, pink, the pinky. No. Give me uh, a- listen, <laughs> listen, I mean, everybody, if you know me well enough, you know that uh, where I stand and how I felt on a lot of days. I don't. You know, um, a lot of a lot of um, the reports that have been coming out of the land bank office and the mayor's office is that everyone's feathers are a bit ruffled because I have been calling everybody out um, and just putting it out there. Like, listen, um, Nicole, there's, do there's you know how, do you know how many times this administration has gotten people to threaten me with lawsuits for pointing out the obvious to the public, the shit you're talking about now? Do you know how many times? Not afraid. I'm still waiting. I believe in you, Johnny Fed. You come and you straighten this bullshit out. The, how many directors of the land bank we've had? How many lawyers we've had? How many directors of demolition? It's garbage. Here, I'll do it right there. We all know. Okay. You can you can do it. But I'm a mom, and so I'm going to get in trouble. But 
Um, By no, the way, I so we so we I, move I, off I, that. I, I got to ask you about that. So yeah, really successful show, like eight years on HDTV, six, ten years, and you got to go. But yeah, and you got to <laughs> go away because we were talking about it earlier. You go off the air because me yeah. me being a guy in TV and on the road a lot, it it's just so hard to live a family life to do things for real. Is, is that why you did just? I, I got to get in touch with my family yeah. and get shit in order. No, it was, um, you know, when our show hit, it was, it was, it was like off to the races. And, you know, now when people get a show, they, they've like, they've uh, tagged HGT for years on their Instagram. They put together these sizzle reels. They went after it. I never went after it. They came and found me and then it was on. And so after, um, I think it was like season 10 or something, I was just like, I'm, I'm done. Like I, it got to a point where um, my grandfather said to me once, he said, when you get to a point and you don't have to work this hard anymore, don't do what I do. Because my grandfather just kept working and working. And he was like, just quit. Just, you need to be home. You're, you're never, it doesn't, it, you're never going to get that time back. And so finally I was like, I'm, I'm out. Um, you know, we went through a lot. We did uh, 116 episodes or something and I'm the producer um, which is, it's crazy. So I, I produce, I design, I'm on camera, we buy the houses and I am, I am involved. We have a very small crew. Nothing goes into a house that I haven't bought probably at Eastern market, you know, <laughs> the right. flea market. Um, so yeah, it was, it was definitely, and that's why I was so excited. You know, when we, we put this other show together to come back with this rescue idea, um, and that's, you know, again, this is why I did not want to get into it with the land bank over this shit, because I worked so hard to bring this show back to Detroit. Yep. And I'm like, you know, and honestly, when all this court hearing stuff was going on, this is when we were getting ready. I think we were still filming. Um, and I definitely did not want the story to be, uh, Nicole Curtis versus the land bank. You know, I really, we really did some cool projects and met some really amazing people, and, you know, I don't know. It's, don't worry about I'm it, Nicole, because cause part of the modern life is fighting the man. Because we all feel that. Man. <laughs> you get around the country. The man is shitting on us. So we're looking for like-minded people, like Fight to Power. By the way, called Rehab Addict Rescue. New episodes Thursday, 9 p.m. No, no more. Huh? We're out. You're out? No, we ran our season, and now they're streaming it all. So, oh, yeah. Tell them to update their um, website. So here's what you do. You just go. Are you looking at my website? Because it's from like 82, but yeah. <laughs> no, HGTVs. Um, yeah. It's H on all oh, the time, come though. On HGTV, put on HGTV. You'll see. Come on. Anyway, Rehab Addict Rescue. You stream it on what service? Uh, Discovery Plus. Okay, there you go. Now, here's the thing. Yeah. I'm going to make that last because I just was thinking about him. Very good friend of mine. Spent a lot of time on the road and what it does to you. I just thinking about Anthony Bourdain and I just want to remember. You can also see his work. Stream it. He's brilliant, brilliant guy. Mm -hmm. So I'm glad you're back. I'm glad you got the piss and vinegar back. And if, please, <laughs> please, just give me a little bit of finger. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll tell you this though. Um, I think it's. I think anyone that knows me knows that we. I. You know what it is, Charlie. I'll be honest with you. Got I it. have no animosity. I know I was right. I know that I did. I filed my deed correctly. We did what we were supposed to do legally. We paid the taxes. We paid this. We paid whatever debt the Collies had to the Detroit Land Bank or to the city of Detroit. You're welcome because I paid it. I paid it. And now, now they're sitting and now they take the house back. So come on, Mike. Um, come on. That's, now, that's all I have to say. Next um, time, well, next you time know, you're I in the city. Like next time you're yeah. in the city, a uh, Karen lives near this disputed territory. So why don't we all meet in Karen, uh, Karen's oh, actually, garden? You did the house next door to me uh, for one of your rehabs. They are literally next door. My house was in the camera shot. So, hey. and how's the work? Oh. Hey, how's, um, how's Nicole's work? Is it like, well, she, wait, Karen must be in a much nicer neighborhood than me. If she was next to one of my pro projects, I just did because that's not my neighborhood. <laughs> how's the work, Karen? How would you judge it? How, how, how's the, you know, I, I only saw the show because because of COVID. I haven't actually seen it. I know my neighbors were satisfied. I saw the show. The kitchen looked amazing. Um, but, you know, it's a huge house. So there's still a lot of work to be done. Um, but there was an elderly couple that had been there for 
ever. So, you know, the house was, it needed a lot of work, but the kitchen was amazing. And I do look forward to seeing it once, you know, COVID is gone and I can actually visit my neighbors. So it looks good. So that, I know what, I know what house you were talking about. The and yeah, it was very professional. They were very thorough. You had a ton of people out here, but they were very courteous and they came over and said, Hey, we're going to be here. Is it, you know, so as a neighbor, and I'm probably a really picky neighbor, pretty pissy neighbor. Oh yeah. She I, carries a gun. I, <laughs> do not walk up on her. I, you know, I th- Karen, thank you for saying that. I, I love to hear that because if you had said, you know, if you had said, un- unlike other directors of different companies that we know about, mm-hmm. if you had said to me, Nicole, I wasn't happy with how your your team handled that, I would have said, Karen, I'm very sorry about that. Let me get back to you because I'm going to go find out what happened and then let's find a way to make it better for you and make you it right. What? See how that works? I'm like you. Had I been disappointed, I would have walked over and said something quiet. <laughs> <laughs> Was, I mean, I really appreciate it. They were very respectful of the neighborhood. So I, I'm glad I, to hear that. Yeah, I yeah. believe you two could be friends. I do think we should meet on, on, in Karen, uh, Karen's backyard. It's really beautiful, quite beautiful. Yeah, her, I'm going to tell you what, now that I know where Karen lives, her backyard is a hell of a lot nicer than mine. So we'll go to Karen's house instead of ours. Yeah. That's because it's not yours. It's the land banks. Get over it. <laughs> All right, listen. No, I, I, yeah. We know you, you you cut up your filming today and everything. Thank you so much for you know giving us a, some time. And honestly, I'd, I'd I'd love to meet you personally. So when you when you come back, let's meet up and have a cocktail. No, yeah, it's uh, I'm I'm not like I said. I'm I'm always floating around Detroit. It's that's where my heart is. We're just gonna keep working. It's it's not like I'm. So that's you know, everyone a no. Assumes that I'm in Detroit. <laughs> No, no. You didn't say, yeah, Wait, sure. You're like, hey, I'm always in Detroit. Like, oh, no, 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 I'm sorry. Charlie, I didn't mean to reject you that way. I'm so sorry. I'm not, no, let's definitely have a drink. Um, no, my, 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 uh, my best friend uh, owns uh, Vincente's downtown. So that's, oh. it's not hard to find me. That's usually where I'm at. Oh, okay. Five. Now, see, you um, see the shirt? You like the then, shirts? Fix the shit? Fix the shit? I say that all the time because I'm like, listen, just fucking fix the shit already. Fucking fix the shit and move on. Yeah, um, I can show the finger. <laughs> no, I can't get the finger. No, no, but I'll tell you this. I'll tell you this. I always say be a solution seeker, not a problem creator or reporter. And that's who we hire to be on our team. Solution seekers. We don't have time for this bullshit. I'm here to work on houses that nobody else wants. Mm -hmm. We're here to take the money that I've worked very hard for to dump it into properties that no one else will put money into. Let us fucking be already. Let us go back to building. Let us go back to improving the neighborhoods and let me go back to focusing on what I do best, which is being passionate about being a part of the community in Detroit and bringing a positive light to Detroit. That's mm-hmm. where my mind needs to be, not on legal briefs. And you know what? That's where my money needs to be. I don't need to be writing checks to attorneys. I need to be writing checks to my trades to keep my guys working uh, because we use all local trades. I mean, that's the other thing that's really pissing me off right now is that, you know, my guys were ready to go full steam ahead on this house. And in the meantime, we've done eight other projects while this house sits there. So wow. thank you so much for having me on. Always been a huge fan of you guys. Um, not a chance I'm going to give the finger to camera, um, <laughs> but I appreciate you trying. You can sneak one when we go to have cocktails, Charlie. Yeah. I, it's most likely I'll flip somebody off. No, yes. Don't worry. You already said, just fix the fucking shit. We're just going to use that. Oh, hey, Mike. Hey, Mike. <laughs> hey, listen, Nicole says, just fix the fucking shit. Line. Yeah. So that's yes. how yes. we're going to take that. All right. Thank you so much. Thank and you. Have a beautiful weekend. Bye, guys. Bye. Thank you. I don't know how to leave Zoom, so you might be stuck with me for Easter. <laughs> we were just, we were going to talk about you. This is the segment of the show. No, I can't. Listen, I'm very, I'm very, like, attuned to that. That's why, yes. No, I can't. Yeah, All right, bye, guys. that much. <laughs> oh, yeah, one more thing. The Comic Vibe Comedy Club, Inside Starters Bar and Grill on Plymouth Road in Detroit, Michigan. Hosted by our own comedian, Detroit Red. Starts tonight. And every Friday and Saturday, the show starts at 8. Admission is free the entire month of April to celebrate the reopening after the pandemic. Starters Bar and Grill, Fridays and Saturdays, 8 p.m., free a month of April. So, Charlie, wait, free, is that, what capacity are we right now? I mean, is is 50%, 60%, how many people can actually get in, free or otherwise? First come, first serve. 24, 36. (laughs) What a win in her hand. Oh, she's a bitch. How? She's mighty, mighty.
It all. 